I came into this business when I was at Princeton, and I worked for a brokerage firm in the summer. And one of the old runners said, Bogle, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know if you're going into the investment business. And I said, what's that, Raymond? And he said, nobody knows nothing. <laughs> and that's true. We don't know what the future holds. We guess, we look at the past, sometimes it misleads us, sometimes it leads us correctly, and we can't tell the two apart. And uh, the markets are very hard to deal with because we have all these opinions out there, uh, and we've got to say, I'm smarter than everybody else. And that just isn't going to happen. In 1975, a revolution began in the basement of a small financial firm called Vanguard. Its leader was John C. Bogle, an unassuming man with horn-rimmed glasses and a beating heart that had already endured half a dozen heart attacks. Yet Bogle was about to shake the towering pillars of Wall Street to their core. His weapon? The index fund. Bogle realized most active money managers charging high fees failed to outperform simple index funds tracking markets. So he launched the first index fund available to the public, despite skeptics everywhere. Against all odds, Bogle's Vanguard Group grew from nothing to surpass $7 trillion under management. It fueled a seismic shift toward passive investing that still roils the financial industry today. To understand Bogle's revolution, we must go back to his early fascination with the fledgling mutual fund industry. Bogle developed an interest in investing at a young age. While studying at Princeton University in 1951, he wrote his thesis on mutual funds. This caught the attention of Wellington Management Company, which offered Bogle a job after he graduated. Wellington Management was among the world's top independent asset managers at the time. Bogle believed mutual funds should operate in a way that only charges investors the true costs required to run the fund, with little to no profit margin. However, most funds at the time charged high fees for active stock picking and frequent trading by fund managers, which research showed hurt long-term returns for shareholders after fees. This early insight from Bogle that high fees undermine investor returns would fuel his future innovations. But the young Bogle immediately clashed with Wellington's established leaders. They represented the clubby Wall Street establishment he abhorred, which profited from charging actively managed mutual fund investors high fees. Bogle disliked this profit-focused model that compromised investor returns and didn't see eye to eye with the executives who maintained the system. I was a very unlikely candidate for a successful career in the mutual fund industry, Bogle admitted. I didn't fit in. Bogle saw an industry asleep at the wheel, steering investors wrong while collecting fat fees. Despite facing challenges, Bogle managed to rise to the position of CEO at Wellington by the late 1960s. However, in 1974, he was forced out from Wellington Management Company due to increasing tensions between him and the Boston Partners from iVest, a growth-focused mutual fund that Wellington had merged with in the 1960s. This internal power struggle resulted in Bogle's ousting, despite being the CEO. Following his departure from Wellington Management Company, John Bogle founded a new investment firm called Vanguard, which was named after naval warships. He was ready to disrupt Wall Street's status quo. Bogle once reflected on the experience, saying, when you go through a challenging experience, you get to discover who you truly are. Bogle envisioned a new breed of mutual fund to cut costs and match markets. He launched the first index investment fund in 1976, attracting scorn from all sides. This fund tracked the S&P 500, allowing people to invest in 500 of the largest US companies all at once. It became Vanguard's flagship product. Previously, investors had to pick individual stocks or pay for active managers claiming they could outperform markets. Index funds made diversified, hands-off investing tied to overall markets returns accessible. This should have been a good thing, right? But Fortune magazine wrote, an independent guide is what the ethical funds have long insisted they were providing, and now they are faced with the market's judgment that the index fund is doing the job better. Critics mocked Bogle's folly, claiming it was un-American to settle for average returns. But Bogle remained undeterred, confident his projectiles would one day breach Wall Street's fortress. Our new venture was far from auspicious, Bogle admitted. The directors had little faith in it, and the management company that employed me had still less enthusiasm. Slowly but surely, the revolution built. For years, Bogle's index fund struggled to attract investors. But adhering to his long-term philosophy, Bogle waited patiently as assets gradually grew to $100 million by 1982. And within a decade, the performance data proved him right. Quick question before we proceed. Would you have invested in Bogle's first index fund in the 1970s? 
I doubt I would have, but I'd like to know what you think, and consider hitting that like button if you're enjoying the video. Moving on. By 1991, Vanguard's index funds had attracted $35 billion in assets. Investors realized the truth. Paying Wall Street's stock pickers 2% fees for subpar returns made little sense when indexes matched markets for less. Bogle's moment had finally arrived. Bogle's conviction in index funds was at last validated. Vanguard surged past its rivals as word spread of Bogle's funds that embodied low-cost, passive investing, and $1 trillion in assets flooded into Vanguard by 1999 as investors deserted overpriced stock pickers. A virtuous cycle started as Vanguard's assets grew, allowing it to further decrease expense ratios, thus boosting returns. By 2000, the company's S&P 500 fund cost a mere 0.18% annually to investors. Bogle was willing to trade short-term profits for long-term client wealth. Bogle's Vanguard caused a significant shift in investing paradigms. Index funds surpassed actively managed funds that were overpriced and underperforming. As a result, stocks and bonds that weren't part of indexes saw a decline in valuations. Bogle's Vanguard had demolished the temple, revealing that the pedestals engraved expertise, trading, and fees were nothing but empty pretenses. In response to competition, rivals such as Fidelity reduced their fees. However, they found it difficult to match Vanguard's cost advantages due to its ownership structure and size. Bogle had transformed the investment landscape. By the year 1995, Vanguard had completely revolutionized the finance industry with its low-cost index funds, causing many of its competitors to scramble to catch up. With the company in better shape than ever before, founder John Bogle decided it was time for him to retire. Over the past few years, he had been grooming his executive assistant, Jack Brennan, to take his place. In May of 1995, Brennan officially became the CEO of Vanguard, while Bogle remained chairman of the company. Brennan came from a banking family, with his father having been the CEO of Union War and Savings Bank in Boston. He was determined to make his own mark and prove to his father that he could exceed his accomplishments. Brennan decides the only way forward is for Vanguard's assets to grow bigger. That means increasing spending on marketing and sales. There's just one problem. Bogle may never agree to this. As far as Brennan is concerned, to pursue his plan without repercussions, there's just one solution. Bogle must resign as the chairman. Jack Bogle has helped put Brennan in the CEO position, but now his protege has turned on him. John C. Bogle was tough enough to survive a heart transplant, but now he cannot overcome the policies of the Vanguard Group, the mutual fund company he founded a quarter century ago. At the age of 70, the chairman should retire by tradition, but Bogle wanted to make an exception for himself because, after all, he's the founder of the company. But Brennan and the board did not approve it, and they forced Bogle into retirement. In a span of 20 years, Bogle has built an unimaginable empire. While the company he founded will live on and dominate the finance industry for decades to come, for Bogle, he is forced into retirement. With Bogle gone, Brennan expands the marketing and sales of Vanguard, but to truly leave a legacy, he needs to find something even bigger. By the late 1990s, a new segment of the finance industry was soaring, the ETFs. As the world enters the new millennium, Wall Street is undergoing a revolution, and a new type of investment fund is growing at an unprecedented rate. They're called exchange-traded funds. It's a concept that has long been difficult to actualize, but now all the major Wall Street firms are staking their claims. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, a fund that trades on the exchange. So think of it as a mutual fund that is available to be purchased, either through the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ market. With the retirement of Bogle from Vanguard and to compete with Fidelity, Jack Brennan is considering getting into the ETF business. Brennan went very big into ETFs, and it turned out to be a fantastic move. Vanguard itself quickly surpassed Fidelity, its big rival, because Fidelity was slower getting into the ETF business, and as a result of Vanguard's decision to sort of go against Jack's wishes, Vanguard is now a giant. Fortune magazine recognized Bogle as one of the four giants of the 20th century in 2004 for his remarkable invention of the index fund. However, he never sought wealth, fame, or power for their own sake. Peter Drucker, a renowned management consultant, once said of the modest Bogle, he changed a basic industry. Very few people have done that. At the time of Bogle's passing in 2019, index funds represented over 50% of mutual fund assets, a significant transformation from just 4% before 1980. Trillions of dollars had shifted from speculative stock picking to Bogle's indexing strategy.
Despite his notable achievements, John Bogle faced criticism from some active managers who still believed they could outperform passive indexes. Others argued that index funds led to the anti-competitive concentration of corporate power and even distorted stock prices during rebalancing. However, Bogle remained steadfast in his belief. He knew that rewarding speculation was a short-term game, and his focus was on the hard facts, low fees, compounded gains. Bogle admitted that his approach was unconventional, unpopular, unprofitable, and unbeatable. For those who were disciplined enough to stay the course, he pioneered a better path. Vanguard also faces changing industry dynamics today. Millennials are increasingly drawn to mobile and free trading platforms like Robinhood that enable active stock speculation, the opposite of Bogle's buy and hold philosophy. Despite facing skeptics and new competition, Bogle's legacy securely changed investing for generations of Americans by championing accessible, diversified market exposure at mere fractions of the cost charged previously. After John Bogle's passing at the age of 89, the investment world paid tribute to his foresight. He proved an unloved strategy could triumph and reshape Wall Street for the better. Bogle, who didn't fit into the traditional mutual fund establishment, transformed it through his own quiet conviction. Today, Vanguard manages over $7 trillion from millions of thankful investors, thanks to Jack Bogle's tireless efforts. Bogle famously said, the only way to beat the market is to do less than the market. He led by example, and his focus on putting clients first led to unprecedented growth. The man who didn't quite fit into the financial establishment remade it permanently with his unique approach. Because John Bogle possessed the rarest trait of all, the courage to fight for an idea whose time had come. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.